Software videos. Y'all want some content? Interaction in Yu-Gi-Oh! is like playing Fallout 4. Like you have four options to do to do something, but really two of them matter. You have a yes, a no, a yes with a little bit of sass, and then a completely different option that really doesn't do anything. Like we as the community always gotta put the interaction card whenever we gotta talk about the positives of Yu-Gi-Oh! But to be honest with you, those interactions only go so far as, do I have the out? If not, I win. If I do, sure, I guess. What do I mean by this? Alright, let's say I'm playing Ad Emancipators right now. I make a full board of, of things that I want to do. I have all this negation out in the field. My opponent then to try to use Regeki. What is my interaction at that stage? Okay, negate the card. Alright, he has another one. I guess I negate that. Oh, he tries to search. I guess I negate that. Oh, I don't have any more. I don't have any more negates on hand. I guess it's his turn to do plays now. Like, where's the interaction in all this? I more so mean where is the good interaction? Like at least, like these cards are old as dirt. But at least some minus cards like Sakuratsu Armor and Torrential Tribute needs to make you at least evaluate the move the move that you're trying to do when you activate this card like torrential tribute sure you can do it on a summon but you can also wait before your opponent makes an even bigger like board to otk you in order to destroy more monsters rather than just rather than just do it immediately sakuratsu armor you have to you have to make the decision of all right which monster do I use? Which monster do I want to destroy? And how do I want to go about this? When it comes to like a combo board that is basically unbreakable or a control board that literally makes you doesn't do anything, where is the good interaction in making your opponent not play the game? Like you are efficiently, you are f basically not playing Yu Gi Oh at that point. You are playing Solitaire. And I know it's been a joke, like throughout years that Yu-Gi-Oh is a solitaire game, but most of the time it kind of feels like that unless you draw the ounce to it. And I'll get into more of that later. Negation has just been something that's been a rampant problem in Yu-Gi-Oh for the past like five years. And since we've already talked about it, let's, let's go and talk about combo versus control boards. I hate the combo versus control type of aspect of like debate because it's two it's two sides of the same coin. You're still letting your opponent not play the game. More than likely if you play a combo board, you have a board that has many negates that you that you pray that your opponent can't deal with. If you have a control sort of deck, you basically play a card that makes your opponent play so slow that that you get more advantage than they ever will so honestly it's two sides of the same coin and it's just not good instead of say designing your game right or actually trying to find ways in order to make sure this problem never existed in the first place instead of that we get hand traps which honestly are just band-aids for the game why do i say that all right let's think about it like this Yu-Gi-Oh! has gotten so rampant in its advantage, in its boards, in its ways for players to basically only play with themselves, that we have to have cards that you randomly put into a deck, hope that you draw them and use them against the opponent in order for them not to get as much advantage. So instead of solving the problem and not trying to make these decks do do as bonkers shit as they do what we're going to do instead is buy cards to randomly put in our decks and randomly draw in order to make sure that we can at least play the game i'm sorry but that design aspect is fucking terrible let's say you use these hand traps right you use them first turn your opponent goes first you activate most of your hand trips like ash and effect veiler and things like that and they basically end their turn there all right you draw you draw your cards all right you make your board and everything you attack and you win all right what was done here 
What, what was so fun about this? What was so fun about this thing? Your opponent literally didn't get to play anything and you just got to do whatever you want. And to be honest, that kind of sucks. Like not only just looking at it, but playing, but playing that way is sort of just boring. Like there is no enjoyment that I can ever feel about active, about drawing a random card from my deck in order to make sure that my opponent doesn't play. And then I proceed to just do whatever I want because they didn't get lucky enough in order to get their stuff. But hand traps aren't the only like terrible interactions in this game. There are also going second cards that were made that just aren't good either. But IDK, most of these going second cards are a good reason why you can go second. Okay, well, that doesn't really matter because they're also bad. Let's look at things such as Dark Ruler No More, Super Poly, Kaijus. All these cards, literally, your opponent gets no response to them, and they can't do anything about it. it like, what is so fun? And what is so, like, skillful about using a card that literally makes it so there's no interaction with the player? Interaction has been a benchmark in the game since its inception. It's some of the reason why people even consider Yu-Gi-Oh! in the first place. Now, why is that said, and then cards like these exist in the game? It's almost like they're lying to you. And it's kind of the same thing with hand traps. These cards are random cards that you put in your deck in order to in order to try to squeeze wins out of your opponent then actually have a, a method of play. Like, instead of thinking methodically about how you go about something, you, you basically hope and pray that you get these cards and then you win. Simo really said that if Dark Ruler No More is used in the main deck then the format is bad here's my retort if dark ruler no more as a card had to be designed then that means the game by itself is understandably broken beyond all belief if you need to make these powerful cards in order for people to even have a chance then maybe instead of making patches and bandages for the game, maybe you should actually try to fix and not make the game as convoluted and as broken as it is. With all these cars that make advantage, with all these cars that have negates, with all these cars that basically make it so that your, your opponent just can't play the game. Maybe instead of the opponent can't play, to be the benchmark, maybe it should just not be that way at all. I also believe that FDKs as a concept just shouldn't exist in this game. Even, even if you were to say that a deck doesn't rely on FDK, that it's simply an option, it doesn't matter because it's, it's the same problem with interaction in general. It doesn't give your opponent it doesn't give your opponent a chance to play the game and it just and it just creates another another aspect of just like shitting on someone that literally couldn't do anything about it because maybe they weren't lucky enough in order to get the hand traps that they can in order to get rid of that like getting unlucky and not drawing protection shouldn't be punished so when an aspect of like an when an aspect of this is in the game and it's just not done about in any sort of way it kind of just shits on a player for no reason whatsoever when you can easily just either make a rule in order to change it or just try to make it so that this would never happen in the first place generic cards in general are also a problem with this game I don't I don't know about anyone else, but I haven't seen a card like Christian Needle Fiber, Rusty Bardish, and Firewall Dragon made and there haven't been problems to it. Like I don't understand the point of a generic card when 
the purpose of it is probably just going to increase tier one decks to an absurd amount of level not only that but these cards also make it so that other cards that aren't the problem are dealt with first before they ever get touched at all it's it's a facet of the game that doesn't make any sense more so because you make problems on purpose and you know it's going to be a problem if it's generic but it's never going to be dealt with until too many people complain about it or it just doesn't make money like monetary value and power creeping for no reason is probably the only reasons why i see these cards keep and keep being made over and over again do you know why when people side deck someone it's usually to instead of deal with a specific archetype is to deal with a type of deck it's almost like most decks in Yu-Gi-Oh are only different because their gimmick gives a person more advantage than someone else. So instead of actually needing to understand what the deck does, all you really need is to know what type it is and then use the card potentially against the opponent. Oh, you know the person is control? Try to side in a lot of lightning storms and try to win that way and pray that you get something. Oh, you know that someone is playing a combo variant? Try to side in Dark Ruler No More in order to make sure that you deal with something. Why is that bad? It's because it basically means that your gimmick doesn't matter. It And not only do gimmicks don't matter, but even when you have a deck that can that can do a cool thing it doesn't matter because it doesn't have the advantage or the negation in order to like in order to be good at doing that thing or to get wins because of it ghost tricks ability to put cards face down atlanteans when their gimmick was primarily only to attack directly triamids with their ability in order to do something once their field spell was replaced these effects these sort of things that a deck does it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because the gimmick doesn't tie with negation at all or it doesn't tie with getting advantage at all it makes the game boring and kind of a terrible feeling when you play someone because the gimmicks that make your deck what it is doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because the end goal is just to make sure that your opponent doesn't play the game. At that point, most decks are just clones of something else. And, the, and really the only thing different about yours versus the next is just aesthetics. My final thing with negation is that memorable moments, it, they come very very few when you actually implement negation in the game especially when there's too much of it because it makes it so that instead of trying to do something in a different way you have to use a card in order to bait something else or use a card in order to bait out a negation just so you can do something i have the perfect sort of story that can explain something like this Four to five years ago, my friends went to our very first tournament. It was it was crowded, and the atmosphere was a little more tense than how it is because we sort of had to deal with other people who we didn't know anything about. First round, I was against a hero player. Now, to make it short, both of us won one game each. So we went to our final game. Before the tournament, I decided that since Pot of Desires was a card that was practically used in that point because Ash Blossom wasn't in the game, I might as well incite a card in order to punish a player that uses that. So I cite in a card called DD Dynamite. This card does 300 damage for each banished card that my opponent had. So when they use that card it would deal 3000 to the opponent now of course the hero player goes first and basically what he does is he both activates pond desires and a hero lives basically he only has 4000 life points 
At this point, it's my turn, and I already drew the DD Dynamite. So the only thing that I'm worried about is to do at least a thousand points of damage to him in order to win the game. Now, it's hard, because I was using DDDs at the time, and going second against a Dark Law is very bad, because once you fusion summon, almost all your materials in order to use for a comeback goes to the banner zone. So, it would be hard. So I decided in order to attack the small monsters like Prisma, and as soon as I did, and I saw that his life points went lower than 3000, I knew it was time. So I set DD Dynamite and I let his turn begin. He drew Dark Hole, completely destroyed everything on the field, and basically all my board was gone. There was nothing that I had left except DD Dynamite on the field. He of course summoned another Dark Law, thought it was game, proceeded to attack me, and then he died. He was mad as fuck ever since, and I made the moment of a lifetime. Now do you know something that probably could have ruined a moment like this? A FUCKING NEGATE! Usually the decisions that Konami makes, especially when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, is just to obtain more money. Now usually I wouldn't have a problem with this because of course, businesses have to make money in some sort of way. It seems like almost all the decisions that Konami makes is only to make money. There has been very few occurrences where I can honestly say that Konami gave the players a bone when it came to product. Like imagine having a year of shitty product and the only way in order to incentivize people in order to pay for it is to put cards that were originally in a main pack inside of a main set. Other than shit like that, and things like rarity bumping and short printing cards that aren't even going to be competitively viable, the ban list is sort of a perfect, a perfect symbol of what Konami actually wants. If a card isn't as powerful as it once was, and it doesn't need to be banned anymore, do you, don't you think that it should be, you know, unbanned? Apparently Konami doesn't think that. Here's a few freaking examples. This is just unnecessary. If the ban list is supposed to be here in order to just, you know, correct wrongdoings and to like, actually prioritize balancing the game for what it was, then why are these cards even here? To piggyback off that, why was there so many cards that actually deserve to be banned, but aren't banned? I'll tell you what, it's money. And that is terrible for a lot of reasons. The One of the big reasons though, is that basically it gives Konami a pass in order to keep power creeping and to keep making more powerful cards because they can get rid of it after about a year's worth of time. Like why stop making more powerful cards when you can just make them, get more money for them, and then just ban them as soon as a year's worth of time occurs. So instead of getting rid of problems right away because it's the right thing to do, what you're going to do is leave it there for a long time and basically try to sell us the, sell us the solution, which is hand traps, which aren't even really a solution. Another thing is that before the card actually gets banned or limited or whatever that powerful card will always let a few other cards that don't deserve it get hit which sucks especially because i'm going to talk about this later but the tcg side when it comes to ban lists really let their cards stay banned for a long time for absolutely no reason whatsoever all right, other than monetary gain, what do I think about Konami's way in order to support archetypes? Do they at least do this well? Eh, nah. Don't get me wrong, it has taken a long time in order for me to make a video like this. So of course, Konami has actually given bones to like a lot of different decks and a lot of different support that actually is useful, such as these cards, my 
my probably favorites being like Fluffles, Phantom Knights, and other things of that matter. However, the problem still lingers on. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is only an Eternal format, it makes it really hard for certain decks to just linger on and be good to where they were even beforehand. Basically, in order to be good in this game, you need to keep having support in some way, shape, or form. And it's just not the case for literally most archetypes. Support is either too late, not good enough, or it's good, but it just gets hit later on. Getting support also, unfortunately, can have the drawback of cards just losing their identity only so that they can be good. Or not even good, but like decent. An example of this would probably be Gladiator Beasts. Gladiator Beasts had the whole gimmick in order to fuse on the field with certain monsters in order to get something. That was something that not a lot of decks had, and even if they did, Gladiator Beasts did it in a sort of way that was sort of interesting. However, given a few years, it would never be good enough in order to, you know, do something until it got support. And guess what happened after it got support? Now it's boring. Do you want to know why? You don't need to determine what cards you actually need in order to fusion summon these cards. You can do basically any sort of combo in order to get these cards. It doesn't take much brain power in order to get a combo in order to summon these cards. And then, even then, now it's just a boring control deck rather than like a situated aggro deck. You've basically made a better deck, but now it's incredibly boring and incredibly uninteresting. Another thing that I hate is that we have too many archetypes in order to support in this game. Like, I understand you need to keep making new archetypes in order to, like, make the game fresh, but the same could be said by just updating cards that you already have. Why is it that we have close to, like, more than 300 archetypes, but over half of them are either not even playable or, like, a quarter of them are just, like, under-supported as all hell? Like, it's a double-edged sword, but it has all the negatives. So, like, say you come out with an archetype that isn't good from the start, and it only gets more mediocre as it goes. Even if the person loves it that much, they're gonna wanna- they're gonna wanna not play the deck as much because it's just not as powerful as, say, something like a tier 1 or 2 deck would be. But let's say you make a deck good from the start, and you just gave it so much support that it does become a tier 1 or tier 2 deck. Well, now it has the possibility in order to get hit, and now it's even worse off than it would be if it was just bad from the start. Like, you'll never win as a consumer. You have to have a deck that is okay to use, where it can, where it's good enough in order to contend, but not good enough to where it's on the radar. And it's, and those type of decks are usually very, like, little and far between. Like, don't get me wrong, I can understand why people don't like diverse sets because you have to plan for a lot of things, but making three decks that, like, are leagues above everything else isn't the answer either. It kind of creates what I call the loop of suffering. The loop of suffering goes as follows. You release a tier one archetype. Have it be played for a bit. Nerf it, maybe to oblivion. And then, after that, release a whole new fucking tier 1 archetype. Now, on paper, that doesn't sound bad, because certain card games like Car 5 Vanguard and, like, Magic the Gathering and Pokemon, they have tier 1, like, decks, but they're not leagues above everything else, and if they are, they're hit properly. The problem is... Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't do that at all. It's very insufferable. You will always leave a tier 1 there for so long in order to collect your funds, get rid of it, and then make a better- and then just make better cards that are just better than the other one. So, so at that point, you just like, are getting every single worst decision ever from Konami. Not only is- not only are you getting power increases for no reason, because 
they want to make more and more more and more decks powerful for some reason but not only that but you have to deal with the fact that these cards will be here and will stay here because they need money rather than they should leave because we know for a fact that they're too powerful every single tier one deck that has ever been hit ever konami knew they were too powerful for what they are and then they banned it immediately why do we have to keep doing this why can't we just have cards why can't we just have a few tier one decks going here we can make them last for two to three years because no one is bored of it because no one is no one is overwhelmed by it and then we can just hit and then we can just make more archetypes and hit stuff that are appropriate rather than only hit it because it's not making money i also hate the idea of a one card solution when it comes to decks and what i mean by this is that they make a single card in order to fix the deck rather than actually think up of ways to make the deck interesting or have to rely on that sort of card in order to play some examples i can think of right now are the brotherhood link and the malefic card malefic territory hey you know the gimmick of you need like your continuous spells in order to make these cards work you know you gotta actually make a decision in order to get rid of resources that you might need in the future and like just use them as a source well now you don't have to think about that and now combos are just so easy that it's just not even worth talking about malefic territory is even worse than this because it's a one card thing that gives you your field spell and then it negates the effects of malefic monsters to not l to not let you attack with more than one now this is more problematic because instead of putting the time and effort probably to just like errata the cards flaws and like give players a bone and just make malefics better instead of that let's just give them one card that you need to pray that you draw and hopefully it works out for you another thing that's like this is giving like old decks new upgrades but you still have to play the old stuff like i understand that i've been talking about how oh you need old stuff in order to like do plays but sometimes the old stuff is just so bad that you don't even want to play it anymore and you just want to focus on what the gimmick had beforehand and just try to make that better all right what do i mean all right blue eyes and dark magician why is it that certain cards like these we have to rely on using the normal monster that we have been using forever in order to play why can't we just get the same card the same name and just give it a better effect that way we can just make the cards better than what they are instead instead to instead we just rely on our nostalgia and and just keep using these old cards for no reason when we can just be improving them to a status more than what it is rather than keep the limitations that we have to just do nothing I keep referencing it, but I never actually, like, showed you, but I've actually made a chart of almost every single archetype in the game. Notice how I say almost, so don't give me shit below. Um, also, it's a little inaccurate, especially with all the support coming in, but we'll vibe with it. There's a total of about 249 cards over here in, like, all these tiers and if you're tier four that means that literally half of these cards are quite literally almost unplayable and the other half are either or at least a quarter of that half are under supported and another quarter of that half doesn't matter so it's a little problematic one final thing that is just a nitpick with me is that i hate popular decks not specifically that because they are popular and they're used by everyone it's because konami really goes out of their way in order to support those decks rather than you know support decks that need it which makes sense at first because you know they're popular of course they're gonna get cards but like when it's so immense and when it's like so big that 
decks like DDDs and like Dragoonides before the support were like getting basically droplets of support compared to these guys. Like, here's most of them, but decks like Heroes, Shadows, Light Swarms, things like that, if you're not that caliber, then it's a gamble if you're actually gonna get support. It is, it is probably going to be unbearably long, or if you get it, it's going to be unbearably short, and it won't actually do anything. Alright, final thing. I've said a lot of things about Yu-Gi-Oh! and how I don't like a lot of what they do nowadays, but it only seems fair that I at least have... If not all the solutions, then at least some of the solutions to basic problems that I think can be fixed. Now, if I couldn't in, if I couldn't influence Konami from the very start and probably start the game from scratch, this is probably what I would do. Number one, each player can only take 2,000 effect damage each turn. That way, you can't FTK first round and for things that give damage they can give damage but they're gonna have to do something else instead of kill in the first turn number two get rid of floodgate like cards we can stop it with the mystic minor true king of all calamities and all and whatever we don't need those to be a part of the game number three this could this this potentially is probably gonna rustle a few you can get rid of just just generic cards that also help with negation. So like Appaloosa, Ash Blossom, things like that you can just get rid of. It's not a lot, but it's it's all I can do since, you know, I'm not Konami. I just want all of you to know that this has taken a long time to make and more than likely I will try to keep trying to make videos in the future. But more than likely I'm going to start on smaller things because this took way too long. And that's really all I have to say on the matter. See you sluts.